Whether you want to add drums, synthesizers, pianos, or pretty much any instrument, you're going to want to know how to use virtual instruments and MIDI. Now, Mixcraft makes using MIDI and virtual instruments very easy, so let's go over a few ways that we can work with MIDI and virtual instruments. Now, to start, we need to create an instrument track. So you would just go up to track here and we could click on instrument. It's that easy. And down here we've created an instrument track and it always defaults to the acoustic piano. And if you have a MIDI keyboard connected, you could just play right now. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard and you wanna hear whatever instrument it is, we can click on this piano here and then we can go to musical typing. And now you can see you can use your computer keyboard to play along. And if you need to change the octaves, you can do that here. So you have some options even if you don't have a MIDI keyboard. You can also record using this as well. So the acoustic piano is cool and all, but for this song right now, I really want to add some drums. And you can see I have a drum kit up here. I'm going to delete that track. So we can look at how we change the piano into drums or any other instrument. So again, we're going to click on that little piano icon here. And it's going to bring up this window right here where we can select the plugin or instrument that we want to use. And you can see you can access your VST instruments in here. So if you have any installed, you can click there. I have a ton installed. So if you're not seeing the same stuff on your computer that I have, that's because I have a ton of other stuff installed on here. So don't worry, you're not missing out on anything, but we can also go down here. And like I said, I want to add drums. So I'm going to look at drum kits and there's different drum kits we can add. So let's check out the 808 kit right here. I don't think that has the vibe that I'm going for with this song. Check out drum machine. That might check out drum machine too. All right. I'm just going to go down a little more and check out the studio drum kit. These instruments I'm showing you right now, they come with mix craft. So you're going to have these ones that I'm showing you. I'm going to go with that one for now. The cool thing about recording MIDI is we can record with this, but we can change it up later. And also if you're like me and you have a ton of plugins and things, you can actually search for them using the search panel up here. But I think I managed to find what I was looking for. Let's just check out the standard kit one first. Actually, I think I like that kit better. That's the one I'm going to go with. So I'm just going to close this down. And I have my kit here. I'm going to put it up to the top. I like to have my kit up at the top. And now what we need to start building our song is some MIDI information recorded or programmed into here. So I'm going to look at the first way and it's probably the most popular way to get it in there. And that's actually recording it onto the track here. So if we play along on our MIDI keyboard and you can see it's playing it. If it wasn't, maybe you have more MIDI connected or something like that. You might need to click on that little down arrow and then select your MIDI device in here, or maybe choose the MIDI channel. But again, we have the different recording modes here. And with recording MIDI, you can do the takes, but you also might want to do overdub. If you're recording drums like me, and I'm not the best at finger drumming, so I might want to do a pass where I'm just doing the kick drum. And then the next pass, I'm doing the snare. And then the next pass, I'm doing hi-hats. Something like that. And you could do that with synthesizers, doing different parts of the synth. So you might want to use overdub, or you could use takes. Or if you like to keep things nice and tidy, and you're really perfect, you can use the replace method. Some other options we have in here are automatic quantization. And you can turn that on if you want. And you can set it so it automatically quantizes your notes to whatever selection you choose here. But sometimes a little imperfection is nice. And we can arm this track for recording, which is what we want to do here. So we'll get out of that. We're now armed for recording. We have our metronome on. Let's just have a look here. Yep, it's on for recording. We've got our count in on there. This is perfect. And we also have our loop region set. 
We don't really need that for this, but I'm going to leave it on. And I've clicked here, so the yellow lines here, this is where we're going to start our recording. Let's press our nice big red record button here. All right, so I did the one take. I'm going to hide the other lanes here, delete empty lanes, and we have our one take. And I know I was off on my playing. So we can now double click on this and it's going to bring up our little piano roll down at the bottom here. And we can see our drum names in here because this instrument is a mixed craft instrument. So it's going to be set up like this. And you can see there's kick drum one and there's our snare two. So I actually think I like snare drum one better than snare drum two, which is what I recorded. So I might want to click on this so I could go to the select mode and I'm going to just drag across those and I'm going to drag it down to snare drum one. And you can see it moved everything over and that's because I have the snap to grid on here. If I didn't want it to snap to the grid, I could hold shift on my computer keyboard and drag these down. And you can see I can move them anywhere within there. So it's not snapping, but it's not keeping them perfectly in line with the way I played them. But for this, I'm okay with it snapping to the grid. So I'm going to let it do that. But you can also see some of these later ones didn't snap to the grid. It's just snapped the first note to the grid. So if I wanted all of those and all of my notes snapped to the grid, I could go up to this icon here and click the down arrow and you'll see quantize here. So I can click on that and then I can choose, do I want eighth note? Whatever it is I want here, I do want eighth note. That's what I'm going to choose. And then I'm going to click OK. And you can see now everything that I had selected, which was all of the snare drums, they've all been snapped to the grid. So they're perfectly in line there. And I'm going to leave it like that. Sometimes you might not want that. You might want it a little more humanized because you're not always right on the beat. You might be slightly off and it's kind of pleasant on the ear if you're just slightly off, not way off, just slightly off. And same thing with our kick drum. I'll now select kicks and I'm going to quantize those. And now it's all quantized in there nicely. So let's listen to what we've got going on. All right, so if I wanted, I could do another pass and I could just do the hi-hats on that. Or I could draw the hi-hats in here. So I could click on my little draw mode here and you can see closed hi-hat. I can click there. So I can put those in there wherever I want. So let's just hear what these sound like, these hi-hats in here. Those are all right. Let's say we don't have a MIDI keyboard, but we still want to get some MIDI into this project. Let's delete what we've got here. And what we're going to need to do now is add a MIDI clip in here. So I can just right click here and I can go to add instrument clip. Click on that. And now I have an instrument clip here and it's just one bar. And that could be all right because you can actually duplicate this bar or loop it. If we actually click on this plus here, you'll see that it automatically will loop it however many times we want. Or we can drag it out like that whatever works for you, but we can also increase it by going outside of the one bar when we're drawing our MIDI in. And that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to strictly draw our MIDI in. So I'm just going to click and we're going to draw this MIDI in here like that. Let's hear what that sounds like. All right, that's way too quick. If we want to get rid of a note, we can click on the eraser here and that's going to get rid of it. You can also click on it and just hit delete if you want. So I want the snare hit maybe right there. Let's hear that. 
Yeah, I like that. And then I'm going to want some hi-hats in here as well. So let's go here. And you can see we can drag these around in here however we want. And we can also lengthen the notes if we want. And that's going to come in a little more handy when you're working with synths and keyboards and that sort of thing. All right, let's just listen to this right now. All right, let's say I like that. Obviously, you can spend a lot of time in here making this as perfect as you want. Let's say I like that and I just want to loop it. So I can click that and we can loop that with our song. Let's hear how it sounds with our song. All right, that's fine. That's another way that we can work with MIDI. Now there's one other way that we can do that. So I'm going to delete our MIDI track and we're going to create another instrument clip here. And this time you can see down here we're on piano. This time we're going to go over to step. And this is kind of similar to the piano roll. You can still see all of our drums down the side here and we can still draw things in. So when I click here, that's going to be the kick. And then I can put the snare here if I want. And I can draw in our hi-hats. All right, so you get the picture. We can continue to do this using our step sequencer or step editor as it's called in here. And one of the things you're going to notice is that these are our velocities because there's no velocity information when you're clicking in there. Like when you play on your MIDI keyboard, there's velocity information. That's how hard you press the keys. It's going to send that information in there. So if you press the keys soft, it's going to have a softer velocity. And that's a more humanistic approach to this. And you can go in here and you can click on these and you can drag them around however you want and kind of make them alter a little bit. Or what we can do is we can go into this menu again, and this time we'll click on humanize and you can see this will adjust the start times and we can also choose to adjust the velocities and we can randomize by 30 or whatever number you want to put in there, or you could randomize in a range, but I'm going to do the randomize by 30 and we'll also choose this selection here and click on that. So now you can see it's moved some things around so it's not quite right on the beat. It's got a little more humanized feel and it's adjusted our velocities a little bit. If I undo that, you can see the velocities were slightly different. And then if I redo that, you can see there's the velocities. They've changed a little bit. So it's just subtle but that's kind of the humanized feeling to it. You're still going to sound like you're on time and all of that. It's just going to be a little bit off just to sound human and not so robotic. Now, another thing that we can do is bring in MIDI clips. So you can download MIDI clips from places and get MIDI drum grooves, and we can just drag those into Mixcraft and put them wherever we want. So now I have this MIDI clip in here and the drum mapping may not be the exact same for this instrument. So let's just hear what it sounds like. It sounds cool, but I don't think it's meant to have a low bongo in there and some of these other drums in there, but it does sound cool. And that's an option for you. There's lots of drum midis out there that you can download and it could make your life a little easier than having to record it in or program it in. So that's the basics of working with virtual instruments and MIDI in Mixcraft 10. In the next video, we're going to look at using loops and the library in Mixcraft.